is my name and I want to warmly welcome you to this interview in the series that is all about unleashing the audacious woman within and have I got a divinely audacious woman to introduce you to today. Her name is Dr. Diana Kirshner and I am so excited to dive into this interview. Dr. Diana is a psychologist and a best-selling author and amongst many other accolades she has had her own one woman tv show so dr diana has a unique approach to help women heal from heartbreak create high value self-confidence and find lasting passionate love welcome diana and thank you so much for being with us today I'm so excited to be with you, Edwina. We're going to do some really incredible things together. <laughs> as soon as I saw your background, I was drawn in. It is so pretty. I love everything feminine that is going on there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank so, you. Diana, for those in our audience that actually haven't met you yet, would you take a minute to tell us a little bit about who you are and how you came to be doing the work that you do now? Well, uh, you know, of course, it's like everyone else who goes into a field. I was born into a situation where I didn't feel loved and I really didn't have confidence. I was the fifth daughter born in uh, an Italian family that only wanted boys. So when I was born, my father said, oh, a girl, I don't want to see her. So he didn't come to the hospital at all. Mm -hmm. And um, so I grew up uh, feeling, you know, terribly unwanted and was really socially awkward and isolated, actually mute. I couldn't really talk to people. Um, and, um, and, you know, of course, once I got to that age where I was dating, it was horrendous. Yeah. And um, I said, no, you know, I have to figure out love. I mean, I don't understand love. What is love? How do you get love? How do you <laughs> love for yourself? love with a partner, you know, it's got to exist, you know, and um, so I studied everything I could get my hands on. I got a PhD in psychology. I uh, learned everything I could and um, both Eastern and Western approaches. And luckily, you know, um, I learned how to do it. So I wound up being able to have my soulmate and um, been married to for decades to my soulmate. And the work I do is paying this forward. You know, I, um, I've helped over 60,000 women around the world to actually really jump forward on their love journey. <laughs> so. What an amazing legacy. I, I can't do anything that'd be much more rewarding. It's amazing. It's such a blessing. I feel totally, totally blessed. Totally yeah. blessed. Yeah. It's incredible. So those, you know, there, I, I'm hearing you've been married for decades, and that's sadly an unusual story in in modern times. And um, I've, I've got four children and separated from their father, remarried. So, and I know that you know that's just such a common story. And I'm hearing about the impact of your relationship with your father. Um, and perhaps your mother as well. And it's, it's such a foundation piece, isn't it? It's such a big yes. piece of the picture. That um, is the template, the template yeah. for love. You learn about love with your parents or yeah. earliest caretakers. This mm. is what love is, right? Mm. So if you were abandoned or uh, mistreated or uh, abused, um, uh, then these are patterns that you learn uh, and also they form how you experience yourself, you know, yeah. that's how you experience yourself and what you expect from other people, the inner and the outer mirror each other. Yeah, there's obviously so much we can do. I, I know that it's really easy to get caught in the stories of I'm um, this way or because of relationships with you know, past partners or parents or so on. I love the empowering story that you took hold of that and decided to change your story. So maybe if we look at, at that, the self-empowerment side of it. Yes, yes. Well, you know, uh, it's very, very important to begin to actually I live in... My dog's easy in the background. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> that means your dog approves of what we're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> Right, he's writing. <laughs> you know, your dog has great compassion for us humans because your dog probably has no trouble loving himself. 
<laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it's, it's really about going back and claiming your unique gifts and your unique skills and your unique yeah. essence, which I call your diamond self essence, right? Which is there before you were wounded. It was there. That's the real you. That's the you running around in the world who's at home and curious and alive and funny and, you know, smart and, um, and, and, and harnessing and holding on to that real you, that spark of the divine. It's really a spark of the divine. And what, uh, what is very powerful to do in terms of holding on to that is to actually give yourself a uh, new name, a nickname, an yeah. actual nickname uh, that encompasses all the loving, amazing things that you are, owning yeah. all the amazing things that you are. And I call this the diamond self-identity. And um, everyone has this beautiful, amazing, incredible diamond self-identity. And you guys do too, even if you are not feeling it right now. Yeah. Even if right now you're in heartbreak and you feel like bad and like you're, yeah. you did something wrong, you know, and you're yeah. ruminating about what happened and your breakup or how you've been hurt. But underneath deep 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 underneath that is this beautiful spark that is you this beautiful spark of the divine and um and so going and finding that and naming her and claiming her you know is very 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 powerful and very freeing yeah you don't have to drag your past into the future yeah you, you do not have to drag your past into the future. Yeah, that's absolutely gorgeous. And I love that you're talking about this. It was something that I did with a coach of mine a while ago. She talked about the higher self, but I actually journal with her. Like it's, we can have back and forth conversations. Yes. It was yeah. very <laughs> odd to start with, but um, I apologize. My dog really is going to have a party here on your bed. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, but that, yeah, it is, it, you know, what would she say? And it took some practice to do that, but it's such a powerful thing to do. So you've yeah. got a few steps. Would you, in, within that di finding your diamond self, would you take us through that? So we've got more, you know, people listening, you've got more of an idea. Sure, sure. Let's do the uh, main diamond self exercise. And would you like to be the, the guinea pig? You Ooh, know yeah, what please. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I could nominate Pokey. He might. <laughs> I'm happy to. Yeah. I'm happy to. Okay. Wonderful. So, okay, everyone, if it's assuming you're not driving or whatever, <laughs> close your eyes. If you are, do it later. Yeah. <laughs> but I definitely want you to do it. Don't just listen to us. Do yes. it. Please yes. do it because yes. you'll change everything with this. Yes. Okay. So I want you to close your eyes. And remember a time where you felt really good, where you felt at home, where you felt lovable and loving, and you felt free and at home in the world. And it could be when you were very little, or it could be when you were a little older. And I want you to find a scene uh, from that where you're looking through your own eyes. And if you can't find a scene, just kind of imagine what it might be like to be uh, a child who was just fully happy and confident and playing and lovable and innocent. You have your scene? Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now I want you to give it a soundtrack, give it a sound, uh, whatever, it could be some beautiful sounds that are happening in that scene or it could be some music. Let it have some sound, good, good, good. And look at the beautiful visuals whatever colors you see. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And feel the feelings of that scene. Feel the feelings of that scene. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And now I want you to make it five times better. Five times better, yes, five times better. Make it five times better. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And now this is your diamond self. This is your beautiful, exquisite, unique diamond self. And I want you to give it a nickname. And I'm gonna say some names to give you ideas. Beloved Mighty Isis, Vivacious Vixen, Saucy Minx, Amazing Grace, Chosen Goddess, 
of love and light. Angelic being who is beneficial to all. Give yourself a name. It can be just a few words or you can just use your name. Like if Edwina was using it, it could be elegant Edwina. <laughs> Okay, you have your name? Yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, very good, very good. Now I want you to make this diamond self image the size of a diamond and put the whole image to the side and get an, an image of a time you felt disappointed in yourself. You may feel unlovable or rejected or abandoned or betrayed. Just get an image of that and a feeling of that. You got it? Yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now I want you to pick up that diamond, make it the size of a hand grenade and throw it into the disappointing self image and blow it to smithereens. <laughs> <laughs> you. Good. Good, 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 good. Now I want you to do that five more times very fast, 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 five times. Blow it to smithereens. Blow that up to smithereens. Blow it up again. Blow it up again. Blow it up again. <laughs> excellent, 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 excellent. Is it harder to get an image of the disappointing self? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. yes. You can do this until it's gone completely. You can do this until it's gone. That's beautiful work. Open your eyes. Mm. Open your eyes. Beautiful. What is your diamond self name? Audacious Annie. <laughs> woo, 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 Audacious Annie. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free for anyone to steal it. It's good. <laughs> Audacious Annie. <laughs> you know, there's room for all of us to share these names, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my higher, we talked about the journaling, my higher self name came out as Sophia. And that's what I had in my mind. It's still you, you, until you did this exercise, it's like, I, I love Sophia, but she, she's the elegant, you know, that higher self. But I, Inner, I love yeah, the, she's the spiritual. Yeah, this is yes. the outward focused yes. Edwina. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Much more fun. <laughs> love it. Love it. Yeah. And you guys, you know, you can play with this. You can add uh, other names that yeah. might appeal to you and, and be wild, you know, magical, uh, uh, wonder diva of the universe of the, yeah. of, <laughs> yes. You know, in fact, I did it on the Fox morning show on the Fox news. I did a, um, reality mini show yeah. and the woman was 37, was overweight and had no dates. And, um, she named herself the wonder diva of love of the universe. And she loved it and lived into it. And yeah. don't you know, well, at one point she had six guys who wanted her in front of the camera, which I'm, I don't know, and six guys who didn't want to appear on the show. And she wound up with her great love of her life and actually with her dream job too. Wow. Yes, because mm -hmm, she was unemployed. So the interesting thing about the diamond self is it programs everything. It's a very deep kind of program that um it really it just it really programs you to get what you want you know yeah. it really yeah. does i know yeah. something that you talk about is not you know necessarily needing these years of therapy and years of, of no. counseling and i love the idea you know part of the whole reason behind this show is just the the ability to let go of all the shoulds and all the layers of messaging that we accumulate in our lives that pop us in a neat little box <laughs> we pop ourselves in there and how we can just rip all that off and that exercise that you just did i mean we can play with that and and unleash the audacious woman within in minutes it's magic beautiful it is magic it really is magic it has helped me so much yeah in so many different ways you know really i mean my diamond self name is the radiant beacon of loving guidance love it beautiful. and when i when i first made that name i thought that's too grand for me you know that's yeah. too that's too wonderful for me yeah. but you know and i struggled and made myself actually live into it you know uh, you have to struggle if you come from a very uh, 
if you do come from a you know harder type background with abuse and dysfunction, you know, you're sometimes a little harder to push into your diamond self name, but man, it does pop through and it, it manifests, it will pop through. You yeah. just keep showing the universe, I do mean this, that's who I really am, I do mean this. You know, you yeah. wanna uh, go shopping, dress the part. Yeah. Like uh, you'll find that, uh, you know, audac the audacious one will put on different clothes than yeah. Edwina. Yeah. Uh, uh, also jewelry, it doesn't have to be expensive jewelry, but jewelry that reminds you uh, of your diamond self is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you, you get dressed as your diamond self. It's almost like a beautiful healing ritual before a date, you know, and you look in that mirror and you say, oh my God, that is the enchanting, magical, beloved chosen one. Yeah. And you're in love with yourself. Yes. You are allowing yourself to be falling in love with yourself. Yeah. And that is so powerful. <laughs> that is that is irresistible to everyone. When you are yeah. in love with yourself, that's the definition of charisma. Yeah. You know, that's the definition of charisma. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I talk about visioning and manifesting quite a lot. And you've got to step into whoever you want to be. Yes. That's exactly what you're talking about. We get to yes. actually be her. I know the biggest struggle that a lot of my clients have is that... Um, the reaction of others if we radically change how we show up in the world. So how do you address that? Well, I actually wrote a book of a, a whole chapter in Love in 90 Days uh, on frenemies, <laughs> yes. <laughs> which I had to write because we had so many women who were, you know, when you move into the chosen magical one, not everybody's thrilled around you, yeah. uh, even if they are your fr friends yeah. or family members, because it's unusual and they're used to the old you and it makes them uncomfortable yeah. and they're nervous and sometimes they're competitive. Yeah. Um, and also unconsciously, they're afraid they're going to lose you because they're used to you coming to them and whining and complaining in your usual way. <laughs> Yeah. Not, they're not used to you flying high. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, so it's very important. And, and what you really need to do with frenemies is script them. Mm. You have to, and the magic, the magic sentence is, I would really love it if. I would really love it if you said my, my, uh, my outfit looks amazing, my, yeah. my diamond self outfit. I would really love it if you told me how great I was doing. I would really love it if you said you can do this to me. I would really love it if. Right. And so you're you're leading someone to come through for you and rise to the occasion and really help you and um, please you and help you grow. And um, and if they don't, you got to distance yourself because you can't be around toxic people who are programming you down. Yeah. You cannot you cannot afford your beautiful diamond self cannot afford that because it's just. You know, we're, we're, we're herd animals. We are herd animals. You know, that's why COVID is so hard for us. But yeah. the thing about being a herd animal is that the herd kind of moves you around, you know, and you got to make sure you're with the right herd. The, the herd is moving you up. <laughs> I, remember, I remember years ago hearing about crabs in a bucket. Do you know that? You know, like if, you've got a, if you've got crabs in a bucket, you know, one climbs up and hangs onto the top, the others will actually pull it down. Um, oh wow yeah wow so I wow think that's a that's a, uh, a great metaphor for what we're talking about here we want to we yes. want to keep the status quo you know in australia we have a great a very strong culture around tall poppy syndrome you know don't stand out don't you know don't toot your own horn that kind of um so it's it's difficult it is difficult for women very to... difficult very difficult for all many reasons you know and one of them is cultural and then there's familial and then there's this general uh you know uh, gender issues about women you know shining too much um and so I think that women are incredibly courageous and amazing. I think everybody who's watching this is a, is a heroine. And I mean, you're doing it, you're doing it, you're doing it because we have uh, a lot of things stacked against us, yeah. uh, but you're doing it. So um, I love that. Yeah. I love that. In fact, you could think about adding courageous to your name or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, or resilient. I know. Or resilient. I know. 
Yeah, I know it's I know it's going to mine's going to evolve. I can feel myself playing with it already. I love it. I love it. You've touched on COVID and it is the elephant in the room. Um, but I don't think it's going to change for a while. So, you know, I that that little exercise just brings so much joy. And so I hope the women everywhere are going to keep playing with that and connect with you. But there's a lot of fear about the future. So yes. How do we? How do you support people in starting to um, to shift that fear and move into a different energy? Well, you know, it's always darkest before the dawn. I mean, I hate to be cliche, but <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I just did a whole video about how there's so many opportunities because of COVID. You know, yeah. uh, men are realizing they need a relationship. They're lonely. They're home alone. They need it. Um, a lot of the usage on the online dating sites and apps is actually either steady or even up because people yeah. need connection. They know it. Also, you can understand who, who this person is because you're in this COVID situation. Yeah. So you know whether the person's a germ phobe, whether he's a, a denier of reality, whether he's, you know, you know who you're dealing with now. Is yeah. he making lemonade out of pandemic lemons, you know? You, you know who this person is much more rapidly because we're in a stress situation. Yeah. Um, also, you know whether he has compatible approach to life with yeah. compatible or similar approach. I mean, you may feel like in order to be comfortable, you're not going to meet in person until you've both been tested, right? Which is fine, by the way. You can do that. Yeah. Main thing is making yourself comfortable, everyone. You can find love. We're having women in our program find love all the time. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing, no matter what. Um, and during this pandemic also. But um, this way, you, you actually know whether they can fit with you because you can see, what do you mean we get tested before we meet, right? Yeah. Or is he on your wavelength, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, but you can definitely do it. I mean, you know, the, we have uh, one of our, uh, our uh, clients uh, just found the one just virtually. They had so much in common virtually, you know, they were doing cooking together, watching shows about Mars. <laughs> on the YouTube and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and really, you know, having this wonderful time and, and, and they're in love, they're crazy in love. And they decided, and she felt she was comfortable with just going for it, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, so they're actually together and uh, this occurred during COVID, you know, that's happening. Yeah. And um, so there are tremendous opportunities during COVID. You can rule out the players. They're not going to hang in virtually with you because unless they're going to get a booty call, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a great way to filter out. I'll tell you that um, I've been remarried for six years. And um, I, when I met my husband, we had three days together. He was holidaying in Australia from South Africa. And then oh, we, wow. spent, we spent like a year building our relationship over Skype at the time. And yes. I, I went yes. to Cape Town and then he came back here and we got married. So, I, you know, this was before COVID, obviously. Yes. It's yeah, so happens. you know it can be done. Absolutely, Absolutely can be done. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm testament for it. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, okay. So, look, I think um, I what I really would love to dive into more with you is I know from my own experience until, you know, I had seven years of being a single woman. Um, it took me a while because my babies were all tiny at that time. But I had to work out who I was. I had to like me before I could let my gorgeous husband into my life. <laughs> I didn't realise I was doing it at the time. But in hindsight, looking back, I mean, that's what allowed me to find my soulmate because I worked out who I was first. So I would love to just, I mean, and, and it, obviously it applies to making healthier relationships if we're already married or in relationships. But can we just, can we talk about that some more, please, how you support women with that? Yes. Well, you know, uh, we're so used to taking care of everybody else, yeah. you know, the children, the parents, yeah. the dog, the <laughs> everyone. <laughs> yeah. And so it's so important to turn your attention on yourself and in, in, and what do you really need and want in your heart and soul? I talk about this as understanding your tough and tender, loving care needs. What, what are your deepest needs, you know, that really fill you up? Is it about, uh, being valued and appreciated? Is it about um, someone honoring your genius and, and, and seeing that? Is it about 
someone giving you gifts? Is it about special time? Uh, is it uh, giving you know special experiences to you? Uh, or is it, let's say, something where they actually help you shape yourself into uh, more of your diamond self, or they call you on your BS, you know, are you, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, like, kind of like, um, you know, are you really going to write that novel, you know, that kind of thing. And, that, and that's kind of, that's why it's tough and tender loving care. There's some things that we all need. Like uh, for me, I need uh, many of those things. <laughs> um, my husband has helped me so much in terms of actually getting work done that I was called to do that I was feeling like, oh, I can't, me, da, 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 da. you know, um, that to me is what love means. You have to understand what love means to you. It is not the same for everyone. What love means to you, it may mean giving you space. Yeah. It may mean a lot of togetherness. You know, yeah. if you have an attachment style that is more, uh, what would they call a, a dismissive or avoidant, you may need a lot of space, you know, mm -hmm. but then also coming together. If it's your more of an attachment style, which is anxious, preoccupied, and we didn't really get into this, but people yeah. tend to form a style based on the way they were parenting, yeah. parented rather. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's an anxious, preoccupied style, which is more, I, I need to have the, connection I need, I need hang on <laughs> yes yeah. and then some people have both yeah. and I myself had both because of the very dysfunctional family yeah. growing I was, but, going to, um, I was going to say it's that almost that toddler thing needing yes needing that attachment yes mm. yes yes so you need to understand your own style do you need a lot of loving input and connection and touch maybe you need a lot of physical touch yeah you know, yeah. what do you need? Do you need to be told to, you know, go out and celebrate yourself, even, you know, go on a trip for yourself to Iceland? I mean, I don't know, you know, yeah. you need to know, you need to know, because mm -hmm. that means that you can get the love that is just right for you. Yeah. And you can. Yeah. Meeting, meeting the real you. It's an interesting concept, isn't it? I know when I met my husband, he's like, what do you do for fun? What, you know, like what brings you joy? And I was like, I actually have no idea. I actually had no mm -hmm. idea. My idea of fun and joy was maybe being able to go to the movies by myself without somebody else eating on my popcorn, <laughs> going, going, to the <laughs> going to the toilet by myself without one of the children coming in. You know, these, these were my greatest. <laughs> I was like that very much like that too. Very, very much like that. Yes. But yeah. we women are, are so often like that. Yeah. You know, we know what to make the kids happy. Yeah. We know what will make our partner happy, but what, is it that's going to make us deeply happy? Yeah. Yeah. Finding, finding what's right for you. And it can be, it can be ever changing as well, can't it? Oh, it's so true. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. So, all right, look, I, I get so dive so deeply into these conversations and then I lose my track of where I wanted to keep going. Um, so we talked about the worries of the future, a bit of bitterness and regret. We've touched on that a little bit that we can, you know, bring those stories with us. Um, maybe if we look at, at that a bit further, I know that, you know, in different trainings I've done the, you know, those firmly held stories that we have that we use to define who we are or our ability to be happy in the world. And I, you know, it, it ties in beautifully with what's going on with COVID, you know, how can I be happy because, you know, job loss or money's down or locked in or whatever those stories are. Let's, mm -hmm. let's keep supporting in that area if we can. Yes, well, uh, it's, the, you know, your monkey mind, which is yeah. what I call the part of you that's like anxious and worried and part of that disappointing self. It's the expression of the disappointing self. And yeah. it's always, uh, it's always like making negative uh, commentary yes. on everything and making you worry and... <laughs> And, you know, I think uh, the most important thing is to not let your monkey mind run your day mm. and you just take it one day at a time. Mm. Uh, the beauty of COVID is you're kind of in the now more because you're not going anywhere and uh, you can be in the now more. And so uh, you don't want your monkey mind to run the day. Mm. Now, uh, what's really powerful to not... To not to prevent that is to do some meditation, 
some mindfulness work, uh, possibly some prayer, yeah. um, you know, the real blissful happiness is in the spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. And that I believe is where your dharma self comes from in the spiritual connection. And so uh, now uh, you have extra time, you're not going anywhere. So you can do a little more spiritual work. And, um, you know, if I didn't do the spiritual work that I do every day, I would be absolutely freaked out and miserable. That's yeah. the honest truth. Yeah. But um, I start, I get up in the morning and the first thing I do is meditate. Number one, number yeah. one, meditate, yeah. right? And um, then I use affirmations. You know, I'm in the presence of joy and the presence of bliss and the presence of love. And... Um, uh, do this kind of work. You know, you have to choose what kind of day you want and whether you're going to bring that sorrow and bitterness into the now. Yeah. The now is always perfect and it offers you an amazing blissful connection. It really does. You know, you just have to use your tools. Anybody who's watching this has tools. I know you have tools. <laughs> And they don't, they don't have to be done. They don't have to be complicated, do they? No, no. I think about the, the effect it has on me simply to get dressed, even though I don't have to leave home. Yes. And dress properly and actually put yes. my makeup. Um, those things make a huge difference to have. Oh my goodness. Makeup. Yes. If you stay in your pajamas and you're not really doing your hair and then you look at the mirror and you're like, look. Yep. It's, uh, it's just amazing. No, I mean, I found that I need to be even more disciplined than I normally am. I'm very disciplined. <laughs> I have to, I'm doing, I'm doing a process of right now, which is hysterical, which is uh, I'm doing um, cold showers in the morning, which oh. energize you and bring you into the moment like crazy, you know? Oh. Uh, yeah. It's an interesting process, but um it's kind of like, I feel like, you know, you have to be with it in terms of doing things for your health and happiness. You know, you really have to be on it. I, <laughs> that monkey mind gets you. So yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. That cold shower would shock the monkey mind out. Do you know, I talk about the universe gives you taps on the shoulders. You know, you need to hear things and you can ignore it for so long, but God, the divine, the universe will just keep giving. And cold showers is the tap that I just have been hearing for so long. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a real aversion to cold. I mean, it's so do I. Oh, that, that's why I'm doing it because I cannot stand it. I cannot stand. Now it's really interesting. It's really, really interesting. But I, I don't, we can do a whole thing on that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, I mean, my motto is you go into places that are challenging, you know, and that's where the biggest bang for the buck is. That's the growth, you know, that's, that's the growth. <laughs> Diane, I think you've given, I think you've given me the final tap. I've got to listen to this. I don't, I don't It's only two minutes. I only do two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. I'll start with about 10 seconds. <laughs> so, maybe if I could ask you, if you've been married for how long did you say? How many years? Decades, decades. What's the what's your secret? I know this is one of the favorite questions that gets asked of people that have been married for a very long time. What do you what do you think the secret is? Well, I practice everything I've studied. I practice yeah. everything I've studied in the lab. Everything, everything, everything. You know, yeah. and it's too it's a little too broad uh, to go into here. But um, one of the main things is being your diamond self, as we talked about, because it makes you happy and light and fun. And you laugh together and, uh, you know, it keeps that beautiful bond going. And then uh, you wind up kind of having an affair with each other because you're in the now and you're different all the time. You know, I've never been taking cold showers before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes. and, um, and, and, and you, and also that whole business of asking for what you really want. I'd really love it if you, and helping the person do what you really want and need them to do. I'd really love it if you did this. I'd really love it if you took out the garbage. I'd really love it if you sat with me outside. I'd really, really love it if you massaged my back, you know? Helping somebody win with you. Yeah. Helping somebody win. You, you mentioned earlier about talking, you know, like in cliches or using a cliche. My clients know that I talk in bumper stickers. I've got a few that I just <laughs> use on repeat. And one of them is if nothing changes, nothing changes. If nothing yeah. changes, nothing changes. And I think that in this time when a lot of us are in lockdown, you and I are both in this situation, um, <clears throat> 
if we keep doing the same things and expecting things to change, it's insanity. It's ridiculous. Exactly. So throwing in a, a cold shower therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I've literally never told anybody that because I just started. <laughs> but see, me, you, you were guided. I needed to hear it. So that's why we connected. Oh, I, I have well, to say it is Monday. truly invigorating. <laughs> I'll <laughs> oh, thank you one day. So maybe, you know, find new ways to throw down a blanket in the living room and have a picnic or we, yes. we've got to change things. We've got to change routines, even, you know, throwing in a board game rather than turning on Netflix. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Novelty uh, adds a lot to the love relationship. Novelty is very important for yeah. helping you fall in love again. Yeah, definitely. Throwing it into the bedroom as well, a bit of novelty. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Playfulness in the bedroom, acting like you're having an affair with each other, yeah. flirting as if you were having an affair is really fantastic. Yeah, beautiful. If you, <clears throat> I, I know that you are going to have so many possibilities to answer within this question, but I would love to ask you, what is the one thing, the first thing that drops in if I ask you the most audacious thing you've done in your life, bold, daring, without restriction to prior ideas? What would that be? Um, well, I have two things actually. One is going into the Grand Canyon in a helicopter and rafting in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. And, and the other was actually doing my PBS show, One Woman PBS show, uh, which was <laughs> very demanding and difficult, which I won't even go into. <laughs> right. Was that, was that something that went over a time or just a one show or what was it? Was it? A, it's a, it was a one-woman show. In fact, it's now an Amazon Prime special, but I don't know if you can get it in Australia, but it's an uh -huh. Amazon Prime special. But um, it's a one-woman show uh, called Love in 90 Days. And, um, you know, I, they brought me into the studio and they said, okay, follow the teleprompter, act natural, make jokes, make sure you deliver the payoff line into the face camera, watch the clock, and make sure you make contact with everybody in the audience and stay in your lines. And I, I had such an anxiety attack. It's like, I can't do that. I cannot do that. Because I was never trained to be a one woman actress like that. And I was like, oh my God. So what I did was I went into the green room and I got one of my own coaches to coach me. Yep. One of the coaches I had trained to coach me. And I worked on my diamond self. I, I worked on only my diamond self and getting rid of all the doubt. I was completely the radiant beacon of love and guidance. I walked out there and the radiant beacon did it impeccably. Yeah. At the end, I fell to the stage crying with gratitude. Three women in the audience got married just from sitting in the audience of 200. Oh, good man. And of course it aired across America. So I don't know how many people got married for that, but, um, but that was, you know, that was really without a net, you know, jumping off a cliff. <laughs> Diana, that's amazing. And I, you know, I just know that the most incredible things in our lives are always on the other side of that crazy fear or that. Yeah. It's when you jump off the cliff, yeah. ladies, you jump off the cliff into yes. your dream and it happens. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I know that you have a beautiful gift for our audience. Would you take a minute to tell them what that is? Absolutely. I am so excited and thrilled. You guys can actually have a session with one of these coaches. I mentioned that I use one for myself, <laughs> but you can actually have a session with one of these coaches, uh, a 40 minute session by uh, Zoom or phone. And uh, it's a breakthrough to love session and um, you will be thrilled. All you need to do is go to lovein90days.com uh, that's love and nine zero days.com fill out the coaching form. Here's the important part. You got to put in Edwina sent me okay. Edwina sent me because that way you'll definitely get your session. Cause sometimes we cannot give sessions to people, you know, uh, but you will definitely get a session if you put in Edwina sent me. And I guess you're going to put a link underneath. I'll video. put a link right under. So I don't have to remember any of that. They can just click the button. <laughs> uh, uh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, you will be thrilled, you guys. <laughs> yeah. So is that a, a love session? So is that for people looking for love or learning to love themselves more? Either. Either way. They, these coaches know all about the diamond self-work and they know all about dating and relationship and success with that, you know, finding a soulmate. Yeah. And, and cementing things in a couple. So. Fantastic. 
Yeah. Beautiful. I wanted to clarify that because I knew if it, the question was in my head, it'd be in somebody else's. You've mentioned your book a couple of times. Can you tell us a little bit what that is? Yes, uh, this is it back here. It's uh, called Love in 90 Days, and it's just out in its 10th anniversary edition. Wow. which is pretty exciting. Yeah, it came out at, well, actually 2019. Yeah. And um, uh, so it's, uh, it's got that chapter on frenemies. It's got a whole chapter on the diamond self work. It has that exercise we did and um, it's chock full of everything. It's, it's, yeah. it, it was cited in the wall street journal. Um, uh, it's kind of like the dating coach's secret weapon. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of wisdom that doesn't, you know, we, I feel like we're in a, an era where we're always looking for the next shiny thing, the next, you know, the next big golden thing that's going to like took it, you know, the golden pill, whatever it is. But so much of the wisdom that we need is actually stuff that's coming from many years ago, whether that's yes. how to eat, whether that's how to maintain relationships, whether that, you know, how to a lot of the parenting stuff, it's actually wisdom that is there. We don't need to keep reinventing and doing yes. new. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All I had to do with the book is just update it with the new apps and how to use yep. them and, you know, stuff like that, because what we talk about absolutely works. Yeah. Right? It absolutely works. So. Yeah. Well, you're living proof. <laughs> And that helps. Thank you so much for your time. This has been an absolutely delightful interview and I can't wait to play with the diamond self, polish her up. Yes, yes, yes. you have to email me as you get. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will, I will. New ideas, yeah. yeah. Everyone, lots of love. Thank you guys you. are fantastic, so courageous. Thank you so much. Bye. Hello, gorgeous soul. I hope that you enjoyed that interview. What an amazingly deep pool of wisdom that Dr. Diana has to share with us. So as always, what I want you to do is to just make note. What is one thing that you heard that you could play with? Practice take action on because as much as we're downloading all this empowering inspiring information if nothing changes nothing changes one of my bumper stickers so what i would love you to do is just make note what is something you heard that was like oh i could try that or oh, that would make a difference so if i can give you a tip something that i actually wrote down you probably noticed while Diana was talking was the question, I would really love it if. So this is something that's going to be fun to play with. I would really love it if you gave me a shoulder massage. I would really love it if you made me a cup of tea. I would really love it if you made dinner tonight. I would really love it if you brought me breakfast in bed. What is it? I would really love it if you brought the laundry in so I didn't have to. What is something that you do and it's like, gee, I wish somebody else would do this, but you don't ask. Now is your opportunity. Play with it. Have fun. Come from a beautiful space of love and respect, knowing that if you are asking somebody else, they also get to ask it of you. So it's generous. Okay, that's it from me today. So much love and Bye for now. Whoa.